again, the feedback of this important conversation with people who are use transit. So Void Bag really received a lot of uh, feedback, that's for sure. Uh, first off, starting with the, the good news, what's working in transit. The last council had the foresight to invest in our fleet. So in 2010, um, there was money put aside to, to uh, remove the fleet. And one of the big success stories with the Toronto Transit is actually we have a very uh, healthy fleet, the fleet that we have. As of this year, all of them are, are the new style of buses, the local black buses. That's not uh, the case in any other like size in the city, so we should be proud of that. Um, another thing that's working is express routes. We currently have three express routes. We have a bus that runs all the way from uh, Superstone to East End to downtown. One that runs from Rochdale to University, and one that goes back and forth off the Mount Public. Um, all the feedback I've heard about this is, is really good. People are really excited about the express routes, and it really works for people. So good news for that, too. Um, our ridership numbers are a big success. Combined total for the past two years is a combined increase of 12% This year, we're going to track for an initial 9% increase in ridership. So that means by the end of 2014, Transit will have issued 6.6 .6 million rides, hard to believe, but really 6.6 .6 million rides. A lot of people are out of transit in the city. Um, a bit of good news about things to come. Uh, this fall, Regina is partnering with Google to introduce Google Transit here in Regina. Um, it's a service I've been able to use in other cities while taking the bus. And um, it's going to be a big improvement here. In essence, you have a Google map on your, on your laptop, your desktop, or your phone. And it's, I can't think of something more intuitive to find it to your bus route. So I think that's going to be a big improvement and uh, remove a barrier for a lot of people um, who are otherwise intimidated to find their stop uh, with our current trip planner, which uh, Transit Live, really good. Main your genre, we should be proud of that. Our trip planner, if not main your genre, we should be proud of that too. Of that too. Um, another uh, good thing that's going to come is um, heated bus stops, actually. This fall, the new time in downtown business improvement district, part of your transit is going to put up four heated bus stops. What a great idea. I think it'll be the envy of many other northern, uh, northern cities, not just in Canada, but around the world. And um, I think we'll soon look back and think, how did we do this uh, before, before heated bus stops? Surely, the giant has winter for about nine months a year. And most of our transit, most of our uh, transfers happen right on 11th Avenue. So I think this will be uh, a very good thing for, for transit use. Um, so now to get some of the, to the list of maybe some of the holes uh, in our system. I'd first like to say that uh, I do. I'm going to relate to the uh, discussion on the fare increases. That's really what we're talking about. Okay. Fare increases. So Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. I do plan to uh, support the uh, the fare increase, um, but I also think that it has to be conditional somehow on, on making our transit system better. So some of the negative feedback that I've heard about our uh, transit system definitely frequencies and issue. You know, we only have buses once an hour on Sundays and in the evenings. Um, overcrowdedness. We had three stops, three routes this year that have had to miss people because uh, the buses. <coughs> It's a good type of problem, but it's certainly a problem we have to address. Uh, service to new neighborhoods. There's several new neighborhoods that have no service whatsoever. Uh, we don't have service to the airport. Uh, staff service, um, we have about five staff hallways where there's no service at all. And um, yeah, I guess that's, where do we start? You know, um, There's a couple issues that I would really like to see us take care of through this year's budgeting process. Number one is staff service, or sorry, service on staff holidays. There's about 30,000 people in Regina who use an R card this year. That doesn't include people who pay with cash or who pay with uh, a, a 10 card, you know, a disposable card. Many of those people, when it comes to the five step, five or six step holidays where there's no service, they're simply stranded. You know, people have to work, people might have to go to the doctor, people might want to go downtown for Canada Day. And right now, they just can't uh, do it. There's no service whatsoever. Um, the cost for us to run, to me, this is sort of a low hanging fruit. The cost for us to run staff service, service on one staff holiday is about $22,000. The increase we're going to see next year by raising fees is going to be $1.5 million. So compare that $1.5 million that we're going to have for new income versus $22,000 to run staff service. To me, that seems like a very, like I say, low hanging fruit is something that we should jump on. We should be offering service every day of the year. Another issue is monthly passes for seniors. Right now, seniors have to uh, buy their passes in either six month or one year intervals. I'm told from transit it would be no problem for us to offer it on a monthly basis. I think that's something we should do. Um, the increase is going to be 50% for senior passes if it passes tonight. So that's a significant people for increase for many seniors who are on a fixed income. Um, so to me, those are two easy fixes. In the long term, ultimately, it's about expanding uh, uh, our fleet is what it takes to really uh, hit those key areas. You know? um, the U-Pass, I think, certainly is, we have to look at it as an opportunity. When we get down in the weeds about, um, I think I've got to You have about two or three seconds, actually. Okay. Okay. I, I hate to get down in the weeds. Ultimately, the issues to decide how the referendum goes. But if they come to us saying you would like to take part in their in the pass, I think it's our obligation to see that as an opportunity to say we have our services ready to, to jump on that. It's not just about the fact that you passes universally um, increase the cost recovery ratio right away. It also means that we're getting beyond the scope of our understanding of comments. We'll get to that at a certain time. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll,
Um, it's also an investment in the future of getting young people off campus and turning a generation of people into transit culture. So with that note, my one question was just uh, one of our presenters here about what does the city need to do to be in a position if next year the students union has a vote and is ready to implement a new pass, what do we need to do to be ready for that? Thanks. I'm, I'm going to say that that question doesn't need to be answered because it's, it's hypothetical and it's not part of the report for controversial. Honestly, we can get to that point, but tonight it's about fair increases in 2015 and 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in going through the report, um, I, I just wanted to briefly talk about the discounted bus pass because I know people talk about the affordability and, um, and I know that we have this discounted bus pass. And I kind of know how it works, but I know that with the increase, it might change the ratio that's there. So can we just explain what the discounted bus pass is, who uses it, and how it's split up? Just so people understand that. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the discounted bus pass is used by people in social assistance and seniors, so it's subsidized. Um, if we use the future model, it would be $25, $25, and $25 can be total. The report says that in 2017, the city's cost will be approximately $40. Is that still going to divide it equally between the other two as well? Or are we looking at taking a bigger chunk? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe that will be divided equally in the front line. Okay. Have we talked to the provincial government to let them know that there is an increase in this? And what is their response? Uh, through you, Mr. Uh, yes, we have. We have. Okay. Just wanted to make sure of that. And in going through the report also, I know Councilor Murray asked about um, post-secondary in the coin box versus uh, regular adult. To me, it seems that there's an adult rate and a youth rate. It doesn't look like there's a post-secondary cash box rate. The post-secondary comes with a pass. Am I correct? Job rate. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, that is correct. Okay. I'm sorry, I maybe didn't uh, explain that properly. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Price. Uh, Council Burnett. Thank you, Your Worship. And I'd like to thank the delegations too for coming forward and uh, helping us debate. One of the things I'd just like to share, I think we you talk for even the, the full, but the last budget process and the current budget process, and I can really share the trend that it's certainly one of those areas that's a high priority of this council, and I think it's one that has considerable debate. But I think the proposal before us today on the fair increase is just one component in the mix of, I think, trying to find part of the solution. I, I think for when I read the report and the analysis from the administration that I mean, was mentioned earlier, that uh, understanding the necessity of having to subsidize transit is well expressed in the report. I don't think there's anybody who can test that, that feeling. I think as Councillor uh, McDonald had mentioned, coming down to the number of 45%, how we get that number is Safety, but looking in the background analysis, they talk about the 2009 Econ report, which is an implementation study where they actually looked at most of the other comparable sized cities as well as cities in Western Canada. That seems to be a close benchmark of where they want to ra raise their, their, their reach. One of the other items that I want to report they haven't had a fair increase since 2010. And when I look at the cost of operating the transit system, everything from fuel has gone up. Uh, 39.3% and maintenance up about 28, 29% of overall operating costs up 13. So costs are continually rising just to maintain the current existing level. So there are real challenges and no one really likes the rate increase, but I think a lot of the, the analysis and the arguments have been put forward by the administration I think provide so far for me one of the best sort of arguments I think we have to move forward on the rate increase. And when you do look at a lot of the comparisons that we'll see, Regina is still very low compared to many of the others, and then because of some of these arguments, I, I certainly will uh, be supporting the uh, rate increase. Thank you, uh, Council Member. Other speakers? Council Clayton? Over there? Or are you doing the other side? Yeah. You have to reduce the margin of the chair, which you've announced so far. I was going to get another 
the city business, so I couldn't be here. So. Um, two things I have. Cost recovery today versus cost recovery if this is approved is how much different? Mr. Romer? Or going to be if we hit the numbers? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, the cost recovery may improve slightly. Uh, the ask for the fare increase is to maintain current service. Okay. And I think if you uh, refer back to Councillor O'Donnell's comments about the investment that's been made over the last four years, um, and moving forward, it's, it's to maintain those operational costs on the money that has been spent in the past. Okay. So if I could, you know, going in that question, um, what costs have gone up that we need to raise the prices just to maintain service? What have we done in the last three years and spent to have to say now increase the fares to keep the cost recovery at the same numbers? Have we spent a million, five million, ten million dollars over the last four years? Um, what's our number? Mm -hmm. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so over the last four years, on the capital side, there have been 43 new buses. 43, 43, put in the state, all low floor, all air conditioning. There have been three uh, small unit buses that have been used on some test trucks. So small buses, less money, however, have operational costs with them. Transit Live has been added uh, the GPS system to the fleet. Uh, cameras have also been added uh, to ensure passenger safety. Additional service in Harbor Landing has been added and the express routes in the Harbor City. Um, if I could, on average, how much is one bus? Uh, one bus is around 550000 So you've invested over $200 million. About 20, 20, 40, 44 times 500000 Mr. Yeah. 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 yeah, please. Uh, 20, uh, approximately 22 million. 22 million. Wow, that's pretty good. Um, what do we need for expenditures going forward, say, the next two, three years? And will the fair increase we have allow us to possibly look at six more buses, 10 more buses, 20 more? Because we're going to have to continually replace our fleet, right? So is this very increase going to give us that stability of keeping the cost recovery of where it is today, or are we going to lose? Through, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the increase will help um, with the replacement of the units moving forward. So the business model today, uh, moving forward, will replace X number of buses as they come to Increase is not going to add service uh, because it is there to to maintain the Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Plano. Uh, other speakers? Thank you. 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 Thank you.